Uh, Sylvia, would you like to say something? I'm, I'm watching for what's going to be happening when Prince King Charles is crowned. Somehow I think it's significant, and I mention it to you, and I, I don't mean it to be any kind of conspiracy theory. It's just that it seems like a very big deal as far as the tribes are concerned. Oh, you're right. Because you're going to... Prince Charles has been around for a long time. He had a long bachelorhood, a long wait to become king. And he has a, he is a, he's an interesting person, a culture, cultivated, well-read and well-learned. He also has ideas that seem a little bit eccentric or uh, things are a little bit different from what the mainstream of people uh, are that concerned with. He's very into conservative issues save the animals save the trees i don't know treat treat work treat people well plan townships that will be user friendly and they very important issues that most people don't really think about so uh people don't really uh some people some people see something sinister in all this as if he's heading in the direction of over control over regulating people i don't think that's the case but we'll wait and see and on the whole, the, the, the king, the, 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 the monarchy of Britain is more like a figurehead, a representative. He's a very, they do a lot of good, they help England a lot, they help the British economy very much. They're also genuinely concerned for the good of people, always concerned for the good of people, their subjects. And they uh, balance, they have a, they have a, have a restraining effect. On the whole, uh, 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 conservative influence, which is welcome. And uh, we'll see how things go. We'll see how things turn out. There's also, uh, I was reading up on the, not reading, I was came across certain articles in the second, about the Second World War, and it's in the Second World War, the British and, and the, the Germans were bombing each other. And, uh, the, and the, the, the leaders of Germany, hardly ever went to visit bombed out cities bombed out uh, they didn't like going to it they tried to avoid going to see the the damage that had been done and churchill and the, and the queen and the king and the, and the queen they used to go around all the time visiting everybody look at uh, commiserating with people showing their sympathy sometimes they cried churchill cried at seeing the damage at times so did the king even and so and people knew about it people and this was genuine and people knew about it and it had a good effect and people identified with them and a good effect on, on the morale on the morale of the people in in those dire and uh, trying times uh, there's also a story that uh, when the bombing the german bombing was in quite heavy over london buckingham palace was also bombed and a part of it wing of it was damaged it was suggested that there may be that, that the if the king is going to stay, maybe the queen should move over more to the west and take the children with her, or just send the children out more to the west where, where it was safe. As a lot of people were doing, people who could afford it were sending their children, staying in London, but sending their children to Wales, to to Scotland, to places which are more, less prone to bombing. So the queen said, uh, "The children, the children won't leave without me. I won't leave without the king." And the king won't leave. So people like that kind of sentiment. It helps a lot. It, uh, it always helps. It, uh, it's a positive influence. And God willing, it will continue to be a positive influence. Also, Prince uh, Charles has always been friendly to the Jews. He's, uh, he cons consults with rabbis. He's a genuine interest in Jewish issues. And he is considered uh, someone who is genuinely wouldn't say on our side, but sy sympathetic. Tries to understand the other person. Tries to understand all his subjects. And considers uh, the Jews are his subjects, uh, like anyone else, like the others. So that is the impression so far, and uh, it probably will continue. Usually things continue as they, as they seem to do. As they've done up until now, things will continue. They can uh, get better, they can get worse, but on the whole things continue as they have done up until now. Here and there you get surprises. Here and there you get people who you always thought were your friends suddenly turn out to be your enemies and the opposite. So, but uh, 
So that also happens. Was I've been working through Joseph again, and uh, maybe it'd be pertinent to something that I'm considering is uh, the Joseph story in Genesis. Uh, yes. That uh, history repeats itself, so to speak. That we see many of the tribes right. change affiliations or run run to Joseph for protection or mistreat Joseph in different ways. Uh, and maybe the way that the United States and England are treated by other European countries in this day and age, uh, we can uh, look at the original example of Joseph for some understanding. Yes, well, you can, you can uh, it, it said, it's the story of Joseph, it repeats itself all the time. You know, Joseph understood that, uh, understood the, uh, the Almighty told him, but he, he knew that the famine was coming, so he prepared the Egyptians to meet the famine. He stored up grain. He also moved the peoples around from one city to another for, uh, to rearrange the social structure, make, make it more amenable to rule over and to help help themselves. And he stored up grain to save the Egyptians through the years of famine, and it did not only did it save the Egyptians. But also the countries round about, also stricken by the famine, they also were allowed to come down and to buy, to buy grain from Egypt through Joseph. And this is what the USA has been doing. A good portion of the world's population would not exist if it was not for the USA. We had the Green Revolution, that was not that long ago, the Green Revolution. NGOs, uh, non-government uh, non organizations, different uh, bodies, uh, philanthropic bodies, they paid, they paid scientists to study agricultural practices in third world countries. And they found a whole lot of solutions, a whole lot of solutions for agricultural problems. And they enabled these countries to produce enough grain to feed themselves. And without that, they would have been uh, stricken with famine. They, they improved, uh, they introduced grains that were resistance to, resistance to rust, resistance to disease, resistant to pests, that gave greater yields. Also, they, they found that ways of uh, irrigation, uh, more, uh, more efficient irrigation, and all over, everything, they took out the whole, the whole problem as one holistic uh, holistic problem whole, whole, uh, holistic subject to deal with on, on every aspect of it and they found problems and they found how to improve the world uh, world production and the nations themselves could improve themselves and grow enough food for themselves and if it wasn't for this it wasn't for this uh millions maybe hundreds of millions of them will not be here today and uh, this is uh, the green revolution you can uh, i'm not exaggerating I've, if anything this is an understatement there's a wiki you can look it up the wikipedia articles about it it's well known or it's documented it's uh, documented and referenced they don't uh, people forget about it don't talk about it but that is an historical fact it's happened in our times this is what they will be doing all the time. They may have a lot of faults. Uh, America, Britain, uh, they uh, they want to get rich. People want to make money. Sometimes they're over eager. Sometimes they uh, might uh, do things that are not the best. But the overall drive, the overall uh, overriding urge, the overriding directive is to help the people they are dealing with. They are pointed over. And they are positive, whereas other nations are not so positive. And uh, this was a part of the blessing that was given unto them. Well, they had to do this as a blessing given unto Abraham, would be, be a great and mighty nation, in order that he should do justice and judgment on the earth. And through him, all the people of the world would be blessed. This is a blessing to Abraham. This is what has come about. And it's come about through these peoples. And this is a proof that they are descended from lost in tribes. And this is a very strong proof. And in addition to this proof, we have hundreds of other proofs all pointing in the other direction, in the same direction. We have historical evidence. And we have a, 
psychological through sparrows between them and nation Hebrews between them uh, and uh, the Jewish peoples or the Jewish sages and so on it's all one picture and this is uh, this is worth knowing being aware of and appreciating and this is a proof of the biblical prophecy so uh, that's what we have uh, just to say so that's what we have on that point uh, Sylvia wanted to say something on Shalom. Sylvia? Do you, um, yeah, do you recommend, how, how do you recommend approaching Jews regarding the 10 tribes? Now, Michael may not be on right now. He may be on route. He's coming here. But um, okay. Uh, he has questions about how can that be? I mean, I, he doesn't feel that the tribes would be accepted by Judah. And I said, well, there's probably billions of us, so we'll outnumber you. But I, I wondered, what would you say? Michael, you're on now. Can you talk? I'm on. You... I've been on for a while. I just keep quiet. Oh, good. Yeah. Oh, oh sorry, if you can work your you're... camera, it helps us to see you. But you don't have to. If you, but if you want, if you're able to, it's not too inconvenient. Are you driving? Maybe he's you driving. Want... Right now. No, hi, hi. How you going, Okay. okay. So, yeah, what what do you what can I ask that would help? You know, we we talk about this a lot, and he feels like the Jews may not be really receptive to the tribes. Okay, so, no, no, first of all, Isaiah, uh, the other Isaiah especially, but also the other prophets. Isaiah speaks about this when the Jew, the Jews see the Muslim tribes returning. Isaiah forty nine. Also in other parts of Isaiah, also in Ezekiel, also oh. that when the lost in tribes return, they will not recognize them. They will not even want to accept them. Okay. Uh, 49, it says, uh, who are these returning? Uh, the, when the Judah sees the, the, the people from lost in tribes returning, one and return, they say, who are these? Where did these come from? I was alone. I was exiled. I was persecuted, send out to, from one country to another. And where were these happened? people when I was in trouble, when I needed them? That's what Judah will say. It says, look it up, Isaiah 49. This is, uh, this is you. referring to the ten tribes when they return, according to the Zohar. In other words, according to the sages, the sages themselves say that, or at least indicated, in, not expressly said, but indicated by references to other sources. And, and the, uh, also, these are sources that this is referring to the Gentiles expressly. So, uh, and another th point of all these, what we say, we uh, is backed up. It's backed up with sources. You know, one source uh, strengthens the other. We say something as applying to lost and tribes. We find sources that agree with us, or that we are, have agreed with them, without, without necessarily having known of them beforehand. So, uh, what I was going to say that. The Jews will have this sentiment, have this reaction when the ten tribes return. But they will be overcome. Some or other this will be overcome. Also, the ten tribes will return. And uh, how it happens, we don't really know. There's a principle of prophecy. We don't know how things will turn out until they do. But it, but we know that the ten tribes will return. And they, at the beginning, they will be led by some uh, Messiah, son of Messiah, son of Joseph, or by, and by other leaders, according to the sages. And uh, they shall fight their enemies, so there will be troubles and tribulations. They will fight their enemies, and eventually they will begin to return to the land of Israel to link up with the uh, Judah. Then the Messiah, son of David, will come, and he will make peace in the world, and he will complete this unification. And... Uh, so, so that is a, a point that is, uh, these prophecies are important because it tells us to not, it tells us in what direction we, we can go. Also, we we don't say, our approach is that well, we have to tell the Austrian tribes who they are. It's important to tell the Austrian tribes who they are. It's important that they know about it. It's important that they know about it. It's also important that the Jews themselves know about it. Those Jews who are interested to want to listen, to, let, to give them the material, to put the, put the, the facts before them. But uh, we're not going to push it. Uh, let the things work themselves out. 
as they will. In the moment, the most important thing is that those people who belong to Lost in Time should know about it and to spread the work, um, word amongst them. And they too have a, a task of their own. Their task at this stage, at this stage, we don't know what will happen in the future. In the future, they will keep the Shabbat, they will keep the law. But our impression is that at this stage, they don't have to because they cannot, in the same way as they cannot absolutely prove, they can't absolutely prove that they belong to Lost and Tribes, even though the indications are strong. So in the same way as they cannot be proved that they are belong to Lost and Tribes, so too can they not be obliged. We can't oblige someone who, who, who can't prove who he is. Yeah, so you. if someone's a Jew, we can say, so you should keep the law, you should do the keep the commandments. But we find someone who might be a Jew, who probably is a Jew, or an Ajumma Hebrew, but we don't know for sure. So we, uh, he can do what he likes we, uh, in, to some degree. He can be a good Gentile and be friendly to the Jewish people and also be uh, positive towards the people around him and help make the world a better place. In the meantime, I deepen his knowledge as to what, uh, as what God, the Almighty may expect of him and what he should do. Uh, and that, that too is, a, uh, is, is an advancement. It's a step, a step in the right direction. Okay. I we wonder do, if Michael don't have to has... make it, don't have to uh, enact, effect a revolution, overnight a revolution amongst all the peoples of the earth, all the, all the peoples who belong to us and tribes, because they're not going to listen to us anyway. <laughs> and <laughs> so we do what we can. And uh, yes. the divine providence was. Yeah. Hello. I'm sorry. I, I, my, my phone battery ran out. I was, I missed about a minute and a half of your, your talk there, but how is it? So I just met our friend myself a few times. It's okay. You caught a bit of how a, is the, Yeah. How, how yeah. are the Jews going to recognize, how are they going to know who is from the tribes and who's not? That's, that's my major concern. I mean, do they accept anyone who feels as though they're from the tribes or is there going to be some test? There is and there isn't. Uh, so we, we um, base ourselves on prophecy. Okay. The prophecy. In the end times, there will be leaders, there will be people who have prophetic powers. Also, the objective reality, the objective reality which would put, exert pressure in that direction. Well, they need and, and when, and sorry, and, and when the Messiah is also principle, when the Messiah, son of David, we have but several Messiahs. The first two most important Messiahs, the Messiah, son of Joseph, Messiah, son of David. The Messiah, son of Joseph, comes first, and he leads the lost in tribes, and he enables them and helps them, helps save them and guide them, and they begin to return. And then the, the re returning is completed by the Messiah, son of David. And the Messiah, son of David, according to the law, according to my is will enable everyone who belongs to an Israelite tribe know to which tribe he belongs. Wow. But that's, uh, so that's some way along the line. We don't have to do that now. We don't have to do that now. But, but by studying the subject, by looking at the historical sources, by looking at tribal characteristics and comparing them to the reality, we can get some idea. Also, some people can get uh, quite close to get a, a certain certainty as to what tribe they may well belong to, which is also helps. And uh, and uh, even if it's not correct, it's, it's an insight, it's a doorway into into this whole study, which it can help open up in, into uh, into the, the desirable direction. Don't you think God plays a role in that? Sure. Pardon? I think God plays a big role. Yeah, exactly, yeah, the, the divine providence, the yeah, divine providence leads people. is a, is a principle. Uh, yeah, take take one step and God will take two steps towards you. Yeah, yeah, you start off and God will come to meet you. And you, you start yeah. looking at the subject and he will guide you along the way. That's a, a known principle, a biblical principle. So we have to, to, to begin to believe in God, to pray, and to do what we can. And God will God will open up doors for us, or doors of understanding. He opens their mind up for us, uh, our hearts. He, he, he helps us. I wouldn't be here today with you, Yair, if I hadn't been listening to God. Exactly, yeah.
So the tribe members, will they will they accept the Talmudic law or are they not obligated to Talmudic law? The, I don't. We don't know how things will be in the end times. It could be that it could maybe changes, may not be changes. Waiting for connection. Adam, we don't know how things will be in the end times. <laughs> but but the but my understanding, our understanding is that the Talmudic law is biblically justified. It's what the Bible wants of Jews at this time. When the ten tribes return. What will happen? We don't know. We have the impression that they will accept some type of, of, of some, it was uh, accept the law, accept uh, biblical injunctions, and uh, they may well be very similar to to Talmudic law. That we, we we can wait and see. In other oh, words, uh, if you, you don't have to accept it now, you don't have to accept it uh, at all. But uh, you should have, in our opinion, you should have an open mind. Because very often these laws, when you look into them, they're based on Hebrew texts. They're justified by Hebrew texts. And the people who enacted them were was promised that God would be with them and guide them. And the only question is, when does that mean that they aren't apply now only to the Jews or to the lost ten tribes as well? Yeah, you. Yes. Um, I want to add. Uh, yeah, and thank you for that. Um, uh, scripture from uh, Yeshiau, and he, uh, I, I want to read from Yeshiau uh, 49.6. Uh, okay. So uh, very much important. And he says, shall it be a small matter for you to be my servant, to raise up the tribes of Yaakov and to bring back the preserved ones of Israel? And I shall give you as a light uh, to the nations to be, be my deliverance to the ends uh, of the earth. And thank you for your, um, all your effort to raise up the tribes of Yaakov. And a very important, uh, um, if I can add, uh, how we will know, well, I'm, I'm myself is from, I fully associate with the, Northern Kingdom of the House of Israel, but in uh, Ezekiel 36, uh, verse uh, um, verse 26, and I shall give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you, exactly. and I shall take the heart of stone out of your flesh, and I shall give you a heart of flesh, and put my spirit uh, spirit within you. And I shall cause you to walk in my laws and guard my right rulings and shall do them. So for me, when people start to uh, obey uh, the instructions of the Almighty, that's when I know they really from, uh, from the house of Ephraim Israel uh, awakening in the nations. Yeah. Amen. For the British Isles, according to traditional uh, traditional descriptions, at uh, first there were peoples who had Celtic culture, similar to the Welsh, similar to, uh, to Irish, all over Britain. Then came the Angles and Saxons from uh, Scandinavia and Northern Germany. And after the Ang that is Angles and Saxons, different groups associated with them, there were, uh, several tribes, not only Angles, Saxons, and Jews, but more tribes. They came to Britain, uh, the Frisians from Holland, and so on. And after that, there were also peoples who came to um, came from the Vikings, uh, from Denmark, and Norway, and the Normans. After that, the Normans from France, who included a great not large number of Frenchmen. Even even though their base was uh, was also from Scandinavia, and we had other peoples coming in and settling in the British Isles, and they was uh, most of these peoples were similar to each other, and then they place names and indications, historical indications that they descend from the tribes of Israel, and we can also find tribal configurations by comparing the names of the names of the clans and so on. We can compare them to Israelite clans. For instance, as we said, as we mentioned, when Jacob, Jacob had Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, 
when they went down to Egypt, when Jacob went down to Egypt, uh -huh. Jacob went down to his 12 okay. sons who came down to Egypt. When he went down to Egypt, he came down with his 12 sons and the grandsons. Altogether, there were 70. And in, G and in Egypt, they increased and multiplied, then they come up out of G Egypt, and we find in the book of Numbers a list census figures of all the type of the groups coming up, and each of the tribes had these. The sons and grandsons created uh, clans and sub tribes amongst the tribes. And also, we find when they were exiled, they take the Israelites uh, were together in the land of Israel, then the land of it, then the kingdom is divided into two different sections. The northern kingdom of ten tribes was in the north. This was conquered by the Assyrians and taken into exile. And then the places of exile, then they moved. They moved to the north, they moved to the west. Some of them moved by, by ship through the Mediterranean, others by land. They all converged in the west. We find where they set up, they retained, often retained names similar to those they had had in the land of Israel, which help us identify them to which tribes or sub tribes they belong to. I'll go through a few of these names now, just out of interest. So we have in amongst in America, it, sorry, we had in, in the, and incidentally from the, from England, from Western Europe, came a good portion of the inhabitants of the USA, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, and South Africa and related areas. So we had in southwest, southwest England, had the Danoni, also known as Danons, or Dan, from the tribe of Dan. After that, we had others in Scotland, also with the name of Dan. We had the river, two rivers named Don. And uh, later on, we had the Vikings who came in and settled in England, in northern England. The Danes from Denmark were descended by, from Dan, according to their own traditions. And they said on the east coast was the Norwegians, the Vikings were probably from the Ptolemy and they settled more on the west coast of, of England. Whereas most of the Vikings were also very important in Ireland, and most of the Vikings who settled in Ireland, they created all the towns, all the major towns of Ireland were actually created by Viking settlers. And most of them appeared to have been Danes from Dan. So that it was an infusion of Dan. An additional infusion of Dan into Ireland because it had already been the tribe of Dan are there beforehand in Celtic times. Uh, we were, and these were very important. And we also we had, um, in addition to that, we had the Angles, Angles in the, in the east. The Angles were known, also known as Eagles, and, and the, when they were in Germany before they came, to, or in Northern Europe before they came to Britain, they were also known as Eagles, Eagle, Eagloi. And uh, this was uh, apparently also pronounced as Angles, where the name Angle comes from. Angle, Loy, Angle. In Hebrew, means bull calf. And this is a, a, a nickname given to Ephraim. Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 3, describes Ephraim as an untrained bull calf, an untrained eagle. And this is Angle is also pronounced as Angle, and it gave its name to England. So England literally means the land of the, of the bull calf. Mini Joseph. So this is of interest. Is Queen Elizabeth Anglo-Saxon? Uh, uh, Queen of England, according to the, officially, it comes from the house of Hanover in German province in Western Germany. Hanover, they changed in, in, the, second, in the First World War. They changed, the, the, they were known as the house of Hanover. And in the First World War, because of anti-German sentiment, England was at war with Germany. So they changed their name, their family name, to Windsor. But actually they came from that area of Germany, but it doesn't really say much because the genealogy, look at the trees of genealogy, they're all intermarrying with each other. The ruling houses of Europe were intermarrying with each other and they were taking a, a princess from Denmark, another princess from England, or and, and they, were just, they were taking their wives, they were marry, intermarrying with each other. So if you, if you forget what countries they came from, you, you see that they're all, uh, they're all related to each other, more or less. And it does not necessarily mean that they were German. Also, we should note another point that we came across with when the Israelites' migrations, the great migrations, moved. Moved from the east to the west. A lot of Israelites were associated with the Germans, spoke German tongues, and they moved westward. And such people as so the Dutch, the Frisians, the people in, in Belgium, people in France, people in the British Isles, 
they moved through those areas and that, but they kept on going move westwards but there were some who remained behind and those who remained behind were also found uh sociological historical histor historical sociological studies from all different aspects and the indications are that the groups or groups within germany that remain separate and other parts of europe remain, remain separate from the peoples around them and apparently belonged to the lost in tribes and they had when the lost in tribes had kept going they had stayed where they were and influenced the places where they were and eventually they were the ones who came to america in the 1700s and 1800s whereas those who were not israelites did not so that is a, a subject we've looked into and studied we have proofs concerning concerning it so so this too applies in this case we uh, probably the the ruling house of britain is probably sent from david we find in uh, jeremiah 31 jeremiah 31 is probably so the seed of david would have would be as numerous as the sands of the sea david in the end times would be enormous enormously numerous it doesn't mean that the orders are uh, like capable of becoming the Messiah. The Messiah, son of David, will be descended from David. But if you look at the Bible, it says it will be through the house of Solomon, through the line of Solomon. David, in addition to Solomon, had about 20 different sons, and all of them had a lot of children. It was a policy of the house of David to have a lot of children. And also, that incidentally, the house of Windsor, they used to have a lot of children. Some of the princes of the house of Windsor in England had uh, more than 100 children, illegitimate children, so-called illegitimate children. So then you do that generation after generation and you get, you get a lot of people. And uh, so these are a good, also we find the sense of, of David in Ireland, in, in England, and amongst the, probably the ruling house, the, the king and queen are also probably from David. And this is, and they, so they are probably Amorites of David. They have other indications confirming this possibility uh we had uh also a lot of people come to israel people come to israel people religious enthusiasts and they start praying and they feel um uh, an input of spirituality of holiness and sometimes it turns their head it's called the jerusalem Sinon syndrome yeah i heard what? that what i've heard of that the jerusalem syndrome people that jerusalem is a holy city in certain parts, areas of Israel, such as the Western world and so on, there's a strong spiritual influence. You can hear it. Some people apparently not. It's too much for certain people, and they get ideas that they are that they are that they are the Messiah, or they are someone else, a liar. Or they think so, they're John the Baptist. Yeah, they think everyone, and uh, even there's a joke that, that there's so many people in in, in Israel who think they're the Messiah that they should make their own political party. Yeah, and um, so there are a lot of people like this. Uh, so this is human nature. Uh, what was I saying? But because, there, but there are physically, there would have been a large millions and millions of of, of, of what's that? Millions and millions of people who descend from David in the world today. We trace them, and a lot of people think they descend from David may well be. It doesn't mean they're, they're the Messiah or candidates to, to be the Messiah, but it means they can. To be the center of David is also something good, worthwhile. Uh, and people do do pe people do change. People do increase and multiply. Some people don't have any children, but their brothers and sisters do, or some or other they have children. And uh, some people don't have any children. Some people have a lot of children. There's a story, a, a, well, a true story, in, uh, about uh, 200 years ago in Jerusalem. When Jerusalem was under the Turks, only in Jerusalem itself there were ultra Orthodox communities. And a girl, and a girl had an arranged marriage, and she was supposed to get married to a boy, a Jewish boy. And then in those days the community was very small. So everyone used to go to any wedding. Especially young men used to go to any wedding and they're going and celebrate with everyone else. In some areas they still do that. So they were going to have this wedding at the very last minute. It was an arranged marriage. At the last minute, the groom was told there was something wrong, something wrong with the family of, of the bride. So he said he didn't want to go ahead. 
He said it was uh, he was being misled or he didn't uh, misunderstanding. He didn't want to go ahead with the marriage just before the ceremony was about to, to take place. So Rabbi Zunanfeld, who was a great rabbi at that time, he went over to a group of young men, young Jewish men who were standing around waiting for the ceremony to take place. And he says, whoever of you want are prepared to marry this girl, I'll, I'll promise them a blessing, a great blessing. So one of the boys said, I'll do it. So they married them. So the woman in question lived to be more than 100 years old. And when she died, she had more than a thousand descendants. Children, sons of children, sons of the children, sons of the grandchildren, so on. They had more than a thousand people in her family, in her own family. So uh, so this happens. On the other hand, you get people who don't have any children. Uh, everything, everyone has their own task, of their own blessing, lack of blessing. Uh, but uh, but this is... Uh, so this is a part, the seed of David could be extremely numerous and as evidence indicates that they were. So the kings of the, the monarchs of Britain could also be descended from, from the house of David through several different pathways. Also amongst the Jews, amongst the Orthodox Jews, you have families, no tradition, I met some of them. You can look it up. Uh, there's certain families have traditions that they descend from, from King David. So that is uh, that on that point. Also in England, we have other other places with different clans with uh, similar names to Israelite like tribes and sub sub tribes. Uh, we have articles about this. We have whole books about this book. Uh, the tribe speaks of it, but uh, we will also give talks on it. God willing, in another talk, we go into this in more detail. Here, yeah, here, can I ask, do you have a lot of Jewish people on your mailing list, or is it mostly tribes? We have a lot of people. We don't have a lot of people. That is, the overwhelming majority are non-Jews, but we do have Jews. I know some of my friends are on it. So I know people. Uh, we have Jews, a reasonable number of Jews, and we could have more. I used to put out Jerusalem News uh, in addition to the Britam Now. And a lot of Jews were interested in that, but uh, it was um, I was a bit busy, so I, uh, I let it let it die out. But I've been asked a few times to revive it, and that attract, that that feature did attract a lot of Jews. Uh, and, uh, and and we uh, and our Jewish people know about us. People uh, come, Jewish people in Israel, at least, come and see what, what uh, uh, video clips on on the uh, on the web. Uh, but we should do more. We should do more to attract Jews. But uh, we we did. There were periods in the past. Every now and again, we make a, additional effort to reach out to Jews. But we have the impression that this is not necessarily what we should. What the Almighty wants for us at this stage. I I mean, uh, it's not necessarily you. what the Almighty wants us to concentrate upon at this stage. What is Thank that Tovaya? What does Tovia Singer think? Uh, uh, Tovia Singer, I haven't. I don't think I've ever met. Oh, no, I went to a couple of his talks. He also commented that they gave me a. a, a also, he, he he gave he sent me a, a note of approval to, to one of my articles on a different issue on another issue, and he knows about us, but he's never actually said anything. Okay. He really knows um, why. Why does he know the New Testament so well? Yeah, first of all, that's that's his profession. That's what he does. That is his life's calling, his vocation. He believes that that is what he has to do, and he uh, does it. So that's what he has to do. So he does it just as well as he can. And he's quite efficient. Well, he's got me thinking. <laughs> yeah, and he said he at first he was is. Uh, First, he intended his intention was to talk to Jews, to persuade Jews not to convert to Christianity. But over the course of time, it became uh, greater than that. He said he said he used to hold meetings in different places, and not very often, the majority of the people coming were non-Jews. So, uh, so that's the way it goes. Okay. Uh, we, we are very so, believing. Yeah, he believes. Yeah. He knows it's a subject. Yes, uh, he at does. the beginning, we also. We're interested in, in that in that direction, and we decided, learnt, we understood that it wasn't for us. That we are not to, uh, we are we are we are to do our thing, and uh, other people do this. 
don't think I discourage people from keeping Sabbath and um, keeping the laws just because it maybe isn't quite time because they're getting very enthused about it. And for me, it's a way of um, identifying tribe members, people who really want to draw close to uh, the God of Israel. So they keep the, 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 the Sabbath as a way of saying, I am in covenant with God, you know? So I wouldn't discourage that. Never. Okay. Okay, it was really nice, very really good uh, to talk to you. It's also very good for me. Like, uh, it's good for, uh, uh, like, I work on this uh, a good, for a good portion of, of, of my time. And uh, right. sitting, sitting beside, behind a uh, behind computer and uh, not seeing people, not hearing from them and not knowing who I'm dealing with. So it's good to meet meet the real thing. <laughs> Rabbi, I have, I have, I have a question. Uh, is it say anywhere in the Torah that uh, when Israel is in trouble, that the ten tribes will return and save Israel from possible destruction? Does it have any kind of scenarios about that? Uh, y yes. Uh, 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 like I, we understand that uh, the Messiah, son of Joseph, will come at a time when the, both the lost ten tribes and the Jews will be in trouble. And you will help save them. Exactly what that means, when it will happen, we can't say. That is indication. So this is indicated, not necessarily, and this is indicated in Isaiah and Zechariah and the other prophets. In the end times will be troubles, and Israel will be saved. Not that is, not only the Jews but also the Gentiles will be saved from these troubles. Amen. Amen. Yep. Okay. So. So yeah, we're air, are we are yeah. uh, air? Yeah, are we in the end times? I uh, sorry, we're closer today than we were yesterday. True. Every day brings us a little bit closer, and we think we also think the lost end times, the end times, times are close to us, because there are indications in biblical prophecy that the, that we are getting there. Things are happening sure now like that were happening in the past. Exactly. As I talks about the lost end times coming back by air, by airplane. They didn't have airplane there for uh, for a couple of uh, not that long ago. Airplanes are new, so it will happen. Uh, so this is a, a lot of indications like that. And uh, the Jewish the Jewish people believe this too. Yeah, yes, they, they do. Of course, they do. They believe it now, but the details, the, in general, in general, they also they believe it. This is also actually a, a, an appreciation of books about it. We use those books. So we get uh, informational leads and insights from those books. Our books are better than these. Do say that, uh, but this is a reality. Isn't there a morning yes. prayer that talks about Zur Israel and it talks about Judah and Israel separately yeah. in that prayer? Oh, yeah, there's um, a prayer every three times a day. Not three. I'm sorry. The Jews pray a certain prayer three times a day in the morning. In the morning section, the morning section, it, it has a, a, a short. The, the the main prayer has a short introduction, talking about Judah and Israel and the right. and a, what a famous commentary to this to the prayer book says this is referring to Judah and the ten tribes. Yay, good. There's a nice, a nice tune to it. They sing the Zur Israel. No, that's it, yes. Rock of Israel. Rock of Israel. Yeah, right. Zur, Zur means rock. Zur, rock of Israel. Okay. So, uh, so uh, may the Almighty God of Israel bless you all and uh, see you all again. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, thank, thank you. you. Shalom. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you, Yair. Shalom, everyone. Shalom. Shalom.